Well, hello everybody. Danny back from Deep South Homestead. It's that time of the year again, guys. Uh, we've had a very successful harvest of our Danny corn this year. Now, I had a kind of an inkling in the early part of the year that we was going to have a bad summer based off of things I've seen over the years. The way wasps act, the way the animals were acting, different things like that. And I planted way early down in a water furrow and went through a couple of freezes with the Danny corn. Didn't hurt it. Uh, so we were able to get it up and get it harvested. Now what I want to do today is I want to take a little bit of time and I want to talk to you about the corn itself. Now we, we get asked questions all the time. Is this a sweet corn? Well, what is it? No, it's not a sweet corn. It is a field dent corn. I created it. It's been around 30 years now. Uh, I put a lot of different varieties together and created an open pollinated variety that I named it Danny corn because it comes back true to itself every year. Yeah. You can save the seeds on it. So that's one thing about it that you can do. Now, that is if you don't plant it with other corn. Now, corn can cross-pollinate up to uh, a half a mile, is what they tell me. So, we try to really isolate the Danny corn anytime I plant it. And, of course, now I don't have to worry about where I live at right here because nobody around me even gardens. I mean, and I'm way back off in the woods. So, I really don't have a lot of issues. And on top of that, if someone happens to plant other corn up the road from me or something like that, I'm usually weeks and weeks ahead of them. So I don't ever, ha I've never had a problem with cross pollination. But if you live in an area where lots of people plant corn, uh, yeah, you could have an issue. Now, uh, uh, the Danny corn is a dent corn. It is a field dent corn. Uh, it makes excellent cornmeal. It makes excellent tasting grits, corn flour. Uh, it, it can be used for chicken feed. When I originally created it, it was for my cattle. But then I began to, you know, I mean, all corn, <clears throat> with the exception of genetically modified corn, and even that now, can be ate. I mean, you can eat it. And so I, I ground it and checked it and I was like, huh, it doesn't taste, it's lacking this or it's lacking that. And I would pick another variety of corn and I would intersplice it into it with pollination and to create, a, to create a different taste. And now it's to my taste, it may not be to anybody else's taste, but uh, it, it is a good corn uh, for eating as well as using for your animals. Now, when we... Uh, ship the corn out to people, it will have been in the freezer for two weeks to kill any eggs or anything like that because all grains, I don't care what kind of grain it is, has insect eggs in it. Now, my suggestion would be if you're not going to plant till next year would be to put it back in the freezer. It's not going to hurt it. You can put it back in the freezer. And just leave it till you get ready to plant it next year. But if you don't want to, it can be stored, you know, in the pack that it's in. Now, a few things about the corn itself. Now, I notice lots of people plant corn, and I look at their corn, and I'm like, wow, you didn't put any nutrition to it. Uh, the Danny corn is a very nutrition-hungry corn. You can't lightly fertilize it and expect a lot out of it. I mean, it'll get maybe six feet tall or something like that, be little spindly little stalks, and you might get up some small ears on it or something like that. But if you want true corn, and you want really good corn, okay, I'm going to go through the process of what I do and how I grow it so that maybe... Uh, you, if, if you choose, you don't have to do this, but if you choose to do it, you'll at least know how I do it. I have videos showing 
how I plant my corn, when I plow it, and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going, I'm going to take this opportunity and I'm going to explain to you what I do. Okay, first off is what's your frost date? Now, I recommend with others that you plant after the danger of all frost is gone. Now, I don't necessarily do that because I have the equipment and, and the ability and play in ways I can plant uh, the way my father taught me down deep in water furrows, and that depends on if you've got a rainy spring, I don't advise that because the water will wash the dirt in over the seeds and cover it too deep to come up. But if you've got a dry spring, then the water furrow is, is a really good way to go. Uh, I have planted level with the ground. I've planted up on tops of beds before. I don't recommend planting on top of a bed because you can't throw any dirt up to the brace roots on it. Corn, like Danny corn, needs to be very deep rooted in the soil and it needs to have dirt pulled up on the sides of it as it grows. Uh, sometimes anywhere between 10 and 12 inches up on the sides of the stalks. So let's start at the beginning. I take my ground and I prepare it. I lime the ground. Now I do soil tests. I lime the ground to a point to where I'm at about 6.8 pH in the ground. And the reason I do that is because corn falls in a grass family. And if you're going to have successful corn, I don't care how much fertilizer you put to it. It's not going to work like it needs to if the lime and the pH in the soil is not right. So that's first. We want to get our soil pH up where we need it at. Now, I'm not planting little small beds of corn, and I'm not planting just a couple of four little rows in the garden or something like that in a little small patch. I'm planting a field. So my way of planting may be somewhat different than yours, but the process and the procedure and the amounts are going to almost be the same. So what I do, once I prepare my soil in the field, I come back and yes, I use commercial fertilizer because I don't have, I would go broke buying organic fertilizer to grow corn with. Because it's almost impossible to do it and grow really good corn. I just go ahead and I purchase triple 13 fertilizer. Now I do with my soil test, I do watch the salt content in my soil because that is where the damage comes from with commercial fertilizer. It's not the nutrition fact because plants don't know the difference between organic versus inorganic or synthetic. Just like your body. Uh, both of them will work in your body. Now, I go ahead and I use the triple 13 when I plant. and Because I use planters. I don't do it by hand. I have done it by hand in the past, but I don't now because I have planters. And I put the corn down deep, I mean I put the fertilizer down deep in the ground, about six inches deep in the ground. And then my seed come out for the planter about one inch under the surface of the soil. And that's what I recommend is planting the Danny corn about one inch deep. Now, if you want really, if you want a really good stand of corn that has very sturdy stalks, I, my planter is set up to where it puts about two seeds every 16 inches apart. And that is probably, that would be the least amount I would go because the stalks need to be, I, I usually do mine about 20 inches apart, but 16 will work. Now, sometimes I'll do 10 and 12 if I'm not expecting, if I'm expecting the weather to not give me a good stand, and then I go back and I pull up the ones out in between, that's the weaker ones, and I feed them to my livestock. But I always try to let it be at least 16 to 24 inches between each stalk. And when you do that, your stalks will be as big around as your arm right here. I mean, they will be up to an inch and a half to two inches in diameter. Because the Danny corn will grow up to 14 to 16 feet tall if it has the proper nutrition to it. And when something gets that tall, 
it needs a deep root system in the ground and it, in order and it needs dirt piled up really high on the sides of it good heavy dirt so that it don't blow over in a windstorm so now that we've planted it about an inch deep and it's been fertilized with the triple 13 fertilizer and we have our lime in the field three months prior to when we plant for the best uh, that is the best recommendation is anytime you lime something it needs to be done three months in advance now if you want quick acting you can buy what's called the fast acting lime like they put on lawns or you can use basic slag uh, which is a fast acting lime but it only lasts for one year if you use a true dolomic lime that's in a powder form it will last up to three years in a garden you'll have to do your garden but once over three years but now that we have the corn planted one inch deep, when the corn gets up about eight inches high, I go in and I plow the sides of it. And I have equipment, and you can watch the videos. I have uh, runners that runs along each side of the corn to keep the dirt from knocking it over. And I plow everything, or cultivate, if you want to use a correct term, I cultivate everything on the outside of it to break up any little grass that's trying to come up or anything like that and I put out a light uh, a light fertilization about six inches out from the corn to, to either to the right or to the left it doesn't matter of what's called ammonium sulfate because you can't really get ammonium nitrate anymore uh, and uh, there it, it always says ammonium sulfate usually on the bag and I will put that out about six inches to the right hand side of it in a light, very lightly when it's at eight inches high. And then when it gets to be around 12 to 14 inches, somewhere in that area, I go in then and I throw dirt up to the sides of it about four inches high and I begin, I put another fertilizing of ammonium sulfate again Sometimes I'll do it on the opposite side of the corn because all the roots ran to that one side where it was before. And I'll put it out a little heavier. And when I say heavier, uh, on an acre, I'll probably put, uh, of ammonium sulfate, I'll probably put 100, let's see, an acre, i probably usually put around 100 and, uh, pounds the second time on an acre. And then when it gets to be about 20 inches tall, I call it knee high, when it gets to be about 20 inches or to, to, to 24 inches tall, I go in and I mix ammonium sulfate with triple 13 again and put it out six inches to the side. I go through and I bed up the corn. This is what I call laying it by. I put out real heavy then. I'll put the fertilizer and the, the nitrogen out really heavy. I'll use about, when I say heavy now, I'm talking about, about 200 pounds per acre. I'll put out and I'll bed it up at least a foot high on the sides of the corn. When I get through bedding it up, you'll only see about 12 to 14 inches of the corn sticking up out of the ground because I bed it up that high. And from that point forward, I really don't, uh, I don't fertilize it again. I don't go in and spray my corn. Once my corn gets growing up about knee high, I walk through my cornfield almost every day. And if at any one given moment I see, uh, like army worms are really bad on corn, if I look in the top of the corn and I begin to see where something's eating the top of the corn out, I'll take my pocket knife and I'll cut the very tip top of that corn out. Of, don't cut too low or you or you burn the corn, but I'll cut the very tip top of it out or I'll take my hands and I'll start mashing the stalk up in that area. So if the worm's in there, I will mash him. And I'll walk that whole field every morning doing that until the corn gets up to about head high and once it's about head high usually you've taken care of the worm issue if there's going to be one trying to eat the center out of the top by then and I will let my corn go now if you plant it early enough uh, you usually don't have to worry about corn worms eating your corn but now if you wait until it starts getting hot to plant yeah you're going to have problems with 
with with uh, corn worms. Now, lots of people go along and they put mineral oil on the uh, little silks of corn when it starts putting out silks, because that's when it's pollinating. And some people will use spinosad. Some people will use BT, and and it, to kill the corn worms and stuff like that. I don't personally because I've never had a major issue with it, because I'm very attentive to my crop. I'm in there every day looking at it, walking the rows, looking. Now, can Danny corn be eaten as like corn on the cob? And the answer is absolutely yes. If you eat it while it's in the milk stage, it will every bit be yellow and white. They won't, it won't be red or any other blue or the other colors that's in it. It'll almost all be yellow, but you have to be very vigilant to check it because you only have like a two or three day window from the milk stage when it's either just completely yellow like sweet corn uh, to it starts turning colors. And then it has to be, you can use it for fried corn after that. You can cut it off the cob for fried corn once it gets a little bit tougher. But it can be eaten like corn on the cob. Because the cobs on most of it is little. Now some of it's bred into it to have big cobs. And there's big cobs and little cobs. There's very long grains on some of it. Some of it's got medium sized grains. So pick you, you'll learn as you go along how to choose the correct ears. Now, the average uh, rows of corn on, uh, lots of people check the, the corn when you pull it, to how many rows of kernels of corn, right? It ranges between uh, 10 and 15 rows. It's nothing consistent. 13 to 14 is about average uh, of the number of rows of corn around it. Now, it can be anywhere, depending on your fertilization and the, and the nutrition of the soil, it can be anywhere between 6 inches long and 16 inches long. A lot of mine I grow gets up to about 12 to 14 inches long, the ears do. And they're almost perfect ears if the pollination is good. Now, there are some things you can't control. If it happens to pollinate during a wet and rainy period, you're not going to get a good pollination. I don't care what kind of corn it is. So, you know, you have to take all those things into consideration. This year we happened to hit it perfect on everything. The corn actually matured. It silked and tasseled with no rain. And then once it silked and tasseled, we began to get some afternoon showers uh, around an inch at a time, which is normal for the deep south. That's not a flood. That's just an oil rain for us. And the corn went a, a week or so doing that. And then once it did that, then this heat dome moved in here. And the corn had already matured. It was nothing more left in than to just, uh, just let it dry. You know, we harvested what we wanted to eat fresh. And we enjoyed it tremendously. And the rest of the field, we just let dry. Now... Danny corn, when it dries, normally the ears on the stalks will, when they dry, they'll fall and break down and hang straight down so that they shed water. Now, occasionally your smaller ears, especially if you get more than one or two per stalk, will, will still be standing up. And if they dry that way, then water, if it rains a lot, water can get into it and it will cause the corn to start sprouting and it will ruin on you. And that still can be used for animal feed at that time, but not human consumption. Your best ears is once it dries, and you'll know when it's dry, the ears will drop and hang straight down. When you see the ears hanging straight down on most of it, it's probably dry enough. The stalks may still be a little bit green looking, but if the shucks around the corn are completely dry, and you can reach your hand up inside the shucks and twit and just break the corn to the side a little bit, and it breaks and slips out, and it only has the inner shucks on it, then it's ready to be harvested. Um, so we're going to be putting this corn up here shortly. Now there will be a limit. Ms. Wanda has, is going to have a limit on how many packs one person can purchase at a time because we have so many people who want the corn and we only have a limited supply. It's not like we have an endless supply of it. We can 
put out there. We don't sell it by the half pound. We don't sell it by the pound. We sell it by the pack because that's the only way we can be fair to everybody. Because if we start doing it by the pound, it's going to run us very short on getting corn out to everybody. And the object is not to... We're not trying to sell enough to give it to people so that they can uh, have a ton of corn to plant. We're trying to sell a corn to get it out to people so that they can have enough to save for seeds so that the next year they'll, they'll have enough to eat and save for seeds for the, for the next year and then you can plant as much as you want because uh, you'll be able to save your own seed. And you will know uh, by the taste of it whether you want to eat it as corn on the cob, uh, fried corn, we have videos on all that, uh, or you want to save it and maybe have it ground. If you have your own little grain mill, you can grind it. It's all up to you. Now, there's a few things that you want to watch for in corn. You want to watch if you pull the shucks off of it and you see a mold all over it that's like a, like a dry, dusty type mold, you want to throw that away. You don't want to keep it because it's not healthy to eat. Now, and that is not to say the uh, they have a fungus that gets on corn. It makes it very lopsided. It has big old bulges sticking all out of it. Now, some countries eat that as a delicacy. I don't eat it. I pitch it out to the side and get it off my stalks because it has a smut look to it and it gets smutty and, uh, and some people will just love it. I'm not one of them, but I have seen that in the Danny corn before. Now, not very often, maybe once or twice I've seen a few years in it like that. And I usually snatch them off and throw them out to the side. But other than that, guys, I have pretty much walked you through exactly what we do. Now, when we harvest it, I slip shuck it and I bring it to the house and I take and pull the shucks off of it. Now, you can put it in a corn crib if you have a crib or a place to store it. You can put it up with the shucks on it. It's not going to hurt. Uh, but I, I slip shuck mine, take all the shucks off of it, and then uh, if you saw my video, I have homemade and I have antique corn dryers because I like to dry my corn completely. And I, I put the ears on the corn dryers and I hang them up to let them dry. And once they've dried completely, I go and I, uh, I harvest the kernels off the cobs, everything except the few kernels on the very top of it up there. And I save the cobs and feed them to the chickens and let them peck the kernels off them around the very tip top of the cob. And I leave the cobs in the chicken pen to wallow around in the chicken manure and all that kind of stuff. And then very late in the fall, we will go in and we will have a chicken pen cleaning. And we will take all those cobs out of there. And they'll, they'll be covered up in chicken manure and everything like that. And we lay them out, let them dry. And we put them in uh, old feed bags. And when it comes time to garden the next year, we put those back into the soil. We call those nitrogen sticks because they're loaded with uh, ammonia from the chickens, uh, high nitrogen. And it is a fantastic fertilizer up under tomato plants because the cob itself will hold water. If you put three or four of them up under each tomato plant, it holds moisture in the ground. Plus, the manure on the cobs actually helps to fertilize your tomato plants. Uh, just a little tidbit I thought I would throw in there. And once we've shelled the corn off of the cob, I put it back into bags and I label which one I want to keep for seeds and I label what I want to use for cornmeal and grits and stuff like that. And I put it into the deep freeze and I leave it in the deep freeze for a minimum of two weeks, usually longer, but I do two weeks minimum. And if I want to make grits or cornmeal out of it, at that point, I will take it out, spread it out on sheets, let it come to room temperature. It usually takes about a day, come to room temperature. And then I'll gather it all up and I'll run it through the mill and I will grind it and put it, uh, sift it all out and I will put it in my containers uh, and I put it back in the freezer. Now, you don't have to put it back in the freezer. I just do it as a safety precaution. And plus, it seems to last a lot longer that way. Now, I don't grind a year's supply ahead of time because it uh, it is one of those things that uh, the germ in it does die 
after a while and it is not as nutritious. So we grind only what we're going to use uh, for the first maybe month and then the next month we'll grind some more. And guys, this is how we take care and do our Danny corn. So I wanted to share this with you. I wanted to do this video. It's going to be available. Uh, you'll be able to go over to our Etsy store, deepsouthhomestead.etsy.com and purchase your Danny corn there. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. We tried to keep our word and we're trying to get it out as quickly as possible. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.